Spring has sprung, and we are picking off all the best ones just for you. We will bring you the runs and all the best efforts. Speaking of the runs, knock on your neighbor's doors and let them know this one is on. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. We have too much fun here, by the we way. We do indeed. And the snow <laughs> fell last night in Coon Rapids. But believe it or not, it's springtime and spring sports are underway. Yeah, it's crazy. It, uh, it was snow yesterday, snow this morning when we got up. By the end of the day, nothing left. And gorgeous sunshine and uh, able to get a couple of games in. Uh, this afternoon, but a lot of stuff to talk about. Some teams already uh, well underway for the spring season. We've got some previews of about half of the teams in action for the spring. We'll get to the other half uh, next week on Sports Night. But start right away with the baseball team. They opened the season last Thursday hosting a tough non-conference opponent from Stillwater. The teams had similar records last year, and this would be a good test for the Cardinals to see what they have against a quality pony squad. The Cardinals came up just short, but there were plenty of positives to take away from the game. A slow start unfortunately turned out to be too much to overcome. Nick Carroll walked the first two batters of the ball game. The Ponies jumped on the opportunity. Austin Murrah singled through the right side of the infield score. Ben Peterson put Stillwater on the board. Will Frisch is next at the dish. And he gives a 2-2 offering a ride to center. Avery Lehman is able to track it down, make the catch over his shoulder. But Trevor Eder Zedlick will come home to score. A sacrifice fly. Ponies take a 2-0 lead. One out and a runner at third. Matt Stanton grounds to second. He's an easy out. But Murr comes home to make it a three-run advantage for Stillwater after the opening half inning. Harold able to settle in after the rough start. He didn't allow another run. Gave up just four hits with five strikeouts and three walks. At one point, he retired 10 of 11 pony hitters. Cardinals able to get on the board the bottom of the third thanks to a couple of Stillwater errors. Pitcher Mason Schwerzler sails the pickoff throw over second. Jackson Bate already halfway to third. He rounds and scores. Layman alertly moves to second on the throw. Everybody's safe. Very next pitch, Robert Morissette lays down a great bunt. Murfields throw is wide to the bag at first. Morissette is safe. Layman will hustle to the plate. It's a one-run game. Cardinals had a couple of opportunities to get the tying run, but couldn't cash in. Runners at first and second. Robert Morissette rung up on the 3-2 pitch to end the game in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Cardinals drop a nail-biter 3-2. Yeah, tough loss. And, and again, the quality opponents, as, as we'll yep. talk about a little more later, but they did have their opportunities. And you, you get behind 3-0 in that first inning, you got to dig out of a little bit of hole. Unfortunately, they couldn't dig out all the way. Well, and, and coming into the season, the, the, the pitching is – is a little bit of a yep. concern, um, but the bats uh, could not really get going against Stillwater. But a really nice effort uh, by by uh, um, by Harold yep. uh, and his and his reliever. They pitched six shutout innings after. Yeah, after they, that they, slow he start. really he really did, you know. And Harold's their number one starter going into the season, and that, after that rough first, really did settle down and pitched very well. Yeah, and they they actually were playing Elk River this afternoon. wasn't able to get that score for you tonight, but we will have it for you next week on sports night. Well, the baseball team is hoping this will be a rebound season that puts them back in the mix for the conference title at the end of the year. The Cardinals lost a lot to graduation, but they've got a fair amount of experience and talent coming back. They only have they only have one of their five starting pitchers returning, but they have several of their top hitters back and they hope that will help them move forward. It's too early to know for sure what the season has in store for the Cardinals. Still, there's confidence that this club has the right pieces to be successful this spring. Boy, I think we got a lot of athletes. We got a lot of depth. We got a lot of uh, good athletes that can play multiple positions. So I think we have a lot of boys that are going to be interchangeable this year. Uh, our defense should be very good, very solid. And it will need to be. The Cardinals lost a lot of their pitching from last season. Still, they feel their defense, which has been a trademark for this program over the years, will help them make up for what they've lost. I think we'll have a good defense just like we usually do. Um, we have really good fielders, quick hands, uh, reaction time. We were doing a thing at practice the other day where we were getting the difficult plays, everyone was making plays, so every position, it's, I think we're solid. Pitching and defense gives you a chance in every game, but you need the offense to come through if you're going to win. Last year's club was the Cardinals' weakest hitting lineup in more than five years. 
something this year's squad is hoping to change. Yeah, I don't think we have as much power as we have in the past years, but I think our team is more of a contact first type of team. Uh, we're quick, we can get down to first base quick, so I think it's gonna be a good year. The Cardinals will be challenged every time they take the field. Not only do they play in the always tough Northwest Suburban, but they've put together a non-conference schedule that features some of the best teams in the Metro. Um, you've seen our non-conference schedule. It's as tough as anybody's with Minnetonka, St. Thomas, Stillwater, Edina, Hill Murray, Eastview, New Prague. Uh, and our conference is as strong as any conference, I agree. So there's gonna be a lot of competition. As with any high school sport, the beginning of the season is a chance for the younger players to step up and show that they belong at the varsity level. The Cardinals are already seeing that from a number of players who have put in the work and come into the year ready to showcase their improved skills. We've got a couple juniors coming back. They did a lot of work in the offseason along with seniors. So I think this is a class that's really ready to go. They've been ready since last year, last July, when their offseasons ended. So I think, I mean, we're all ready to go. So there you go. A uh, lot to look forward yes, to this no year. Question. And it's always exciting. It's such it's such a strong program and has been for a number of years. Exciting to see what they'll be able to accomplish this year. No question about it that you know they hope their hitting's better as we talked about in that piece and they and they know that their defense is going to be good. Pitching might be the the uh, real thing that balances it one way or the other. And and we'll have to see what kind of progress they're able to make on the mound as coach Bright always says it starts on the mound. Let's hope the Cardinals can finish it on the mound as well. Cardinals at Champlain Park on Thursday, and then a very rare matchup. They're at St. Thomas Academy next Monday in 20 years. I don't know how many times we've seen any Coon Rapids program face off against the Cadets. I can't remember it either, but uh, it would be a fun one to be at. It would. Uh, softball team opened its season. They were supposed to open on Monday. That got rained out against Edina. So they got the season started in Elk River this afternoon. They lose to the Elks 7 4. Mackenzie Wilkins, a two run home run. Loam was two for two, had a couple of stolen bases as well, but the Cardinals come up short. Uh, we'll get an opportunity to see them uh, later this week. This could be a very exciting season for the softball program. The Cardinals finished really strong last year and returned almost their entire lineup. They return a veteran core that is eager to get back on the field and improve on last year's record. There's confidence on the diamond because they feel this is a team they've been building toward over the past few seasons. We're, we're going to be a better team than we were the last couple of years. We're going to continue to grow. The program's in a great spot. We've got more depth than we've had in a long time. The Cardinals start the season with a lot of experience. They only lost four seniors from last year's squad, so there were a lot of familiar faces when they took the field this spring. Still, there were some surprises. Well, I think every year you come into um, the first week and you have an idea of how things are going to shake out, and it never works out that way. Um, you know, there are always kids who take a step forward and impress. Um, the first day we came out here in scrimmage, we had a girl who doubled off the fence twice, and um, you know, those things are noticed right away. With new players stepping up to fill those last few holes and veterans coming back stronger than they were last spring, this team's potential is sky high. I think we've kicked it up a few notches, and I don't know how much the other teams have been working, but I'm confident that we're going to improve our, ourselves as a team. The desire is certainly there. The talent and experience are there. Now these Cardinals just need to put it all together every time they take the field. We should be a very good defensive team. Uh, we're borderlining on elite, um, we, and we're practicing a lot, spend a lot of time on that. Um, our hitting will be improved. Uh, we have bats in the lineup one through nine that are going to be very good. And uh, you know our pitchers are both back, so uh, we just expect them to take another step. The Cardinals know there will be bumps in the road and that every game won't go their way. However, they also know the adversity will only make them stronger. Just keep getting better each day. Like, don't give up. Like, don't, don't just roll over. Keep, keep competing and try to be better than you were game before. The way they finished last season has really fueled the intensity of the veterans coming back. They're determined to start strong and finish stronger. Everyone seems a lot more willing to take initiative, and everyone's loud and Everyone just seems more like driven to do well this season. Just come out with a fiery passion. Um, we need to talk a lot more, which we're working on during practices and stuff. But if we, the more we talk and the more we're together as a cohesive team, I think the better we'll start. Last year, the Cardinals lost six of their first seven before getting things on track. While they'd like to avoid that this year, 
they won't be too concerned with losses early in the season. I'm not worried about how we start the season. I'm worried about how we finish. Everything we do is building towards the playoffs. Um, and I think you've seen that the last three years out of us. We tend to uh, overachieve in the playoffs considering what our seed is, but we're usually underseeded a little bit because we spend the season working out some things and getting and prepping for the final run. While their focus will be more on the end of the schedule, these Cardinals are confident they'll be able to fly high right from the start. I think we're all really prepared this season. We're coming with a mentality, kind of go and get it. So I'm excited. And we are as excited as well. We were scheduled to do the season opener against Edina on Monday. That was rained out, so we changed it up, and we will be at Champlain Park on Thursday to see the Cardinals take on the Rebels. Yeah, and they play Edina actually tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. They rescheduled that game for us, so they've got uh, they've got an interesting schedule. Yeah, busy a busy start to the schedule Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they have a few days off. They'll host Tatino Grace. Their, what will uh, be their home conference opener that's coming up next Tuesday. Well, tennis team, we talk about uh, a team that is well underway. Tennis team already has eight matches under their belt. Uh, this, this one was kind of a surprise. They got invited to this tournament over uh, the weekend, the 31st and 1st. Uh, so they said, sure, we'll go play. It was an indoor tournament. Uh, they, they were just invited. They went up, they went, and they played, and they did well. Cardinals uh, wanted to get at least one win. They came away with three. They beat Virginia four to three. There are your winners. David Grimmer at first singles. Alex Fish at second singles. Bauer and Bay at first doubles. And Crotty and Musol, a nice win in the tie break at third doubles. They followed that uh, Saturday by beating Foley four to three. Fish wins at third singles. And all three doubles teams coming away victorious against Foley. And then they finished with another 4-3 win over Thief River Falls. Drew Grimmer, Alex Fish, and Andrew Argeros all winning in straight sets, first through third singles. Bauer and Bai had to go three sets, but come away with a win and a tight one. Uh, after losing the second set 5-7, they win the tie break 10-8 uh, to get that victory. And then they opened the conference schedule on Wednesday of last week. They blew past Irondale 6-1. Drew Grimmer got the 6-2, 6-2 victory. Andrew Argeros, just a junior, but fitting in very nicely, gets the 6-love, six 6-love six win. Jared Musol won at fourth singles. Bauer and Bai, Sanders and Boyum getting victories at doubles. Well, already off to a great start, as Joe mentioned. The tennis team hosted Champlain Park for their home opener on Thursday. The Cardinals just trying to keep the momentum going early in the season. All through the lineup, the team is playing well, and they kept it going as they flew right past the Rebels. David Grimmer showing he's a great leadoff man for the team, and he keeps his record perfect at first singles. Champlain Park's Matt Mungai returns this one. Grimmer is dominant in a 6-1, 6-1 win. Alex Fish playing in the far court at second singles. Nice baseline game for Fish, controlling the action. He's able to jump on the drop shot, lob it to the back court. Fish on his way to a 6-0, 6-1 victory. Junior Andrew Argeros fitting in the lineup nicely for the Cardinals. Good volley going here. Check out the reach and the reflexes of Argeros. He goes up for one, then a quick recovery for the winning shot. Argeros also winning in straight set, 6-1, 6-1. Gerald Musoff showing flexibility, playing both doubles and singles early in the season, also showing his resiliency. After dropping the first set at four singles, 06, he comes back to win 6-4, 10-7. Match already in hand, and we get the doubles, but the Cardinals keep it going. Great point at the net here. First doubles, Aaron Bauer and Nate Bai win easily 6-0, 6-3. The Cardinals' only loss came at third doubles. They improved to 5-0 with that 6-1 win. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, Argeros transferred over from Blaine last yep. year, and uh, uh, so he was not able to uh, be on the tennis team last season. Um, he was uh, he was playing playing goalie for the Cardinal hockey team. Um, and talking to the hockey coaches, uh, they were saying he, he, both hockey coaches, Mars and uh, and uh, Mo, have have talked about the kids' focus and intensity. And there you saw it on the on the one highlight. No He's very intense. Um, fun to see him uh, getting into the lineup and and being effective for the Cardinal tennis squad as well. Cardinals hosted their first tournament of the season on Saturday, and they just keep on rolling. They beat Rogers 5-2, they beat the Panthers from Spring Lake Park 4-3, and they finished it up with a 4-3 win over St. Michael Albertville. Alex uh, Fish, Andrew Argeros, and Aaron Bauer all went 3-0 
throughout uh, Saturday's event at the Bob Pivot Courts and uh, moved around a little bit. They weren't all in the same spots every match, uh, but that's that's the beauty of this team, and yep. it has been for years, sh having some flexibility and still being able uh, to move some players from, from singles to doubles and back uh, and still get some victories at those spots. Well, yeah, and, and one of the keys they, you know, they told, told me about, usually in the beginning of the season they, they do some – play some scrimmages, but getting in that tournament early really kind of got them off to a good start indoors against some competition. And uh, you're looking at their record 8-0, so it's pretty nice right now. Well, I'd say uh, they're – and they're – their uh, competition level is going to go up yep. this week. We'll get to that in a minute. Eight straight wins, as you mentioned, to start the season. Cardinals already surpassed their great start from last year, and there's no telling how far this club can go. The road won't get any easier, but the Cardinals feel they're ready for the challenge. They bring back a lot of talent and experience, and they're confident. This is a team that will be a contender for the conference and the section titles this spring. Yeah, we're all looking good. We, we know we have a strong core, and... It's, it's going to be a fun season. The Cardinals come into the season with a lot of added experience and the confidence that goes with it. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually expecting a lot more compared to last year. Last year we were young. We had a lot of first, second years. This year, whole varsity line with veterans. They've got a couple years under their belts. So I think we're going to go far. Definitely a deep playoff run. I wouldn't be surprised if we meant to state. I'm really looking forward to it. The team's early season success is just adding to that confidence. From their first match, they were able to exceed even their own lofty expectations. Well, we've we've already started the season off strong this season. With uh, we just had a tournament, we went three and zero, and we're just gonna keep building off that. Hopefully, we can go further in the state tourney. So that's where our goal is. So far, they've been able to do that, including sweeping their way through their first two tournaments of the season. While their momentum is very exciting, Coach Stork is quick to keep their egos in check. I thought going into the season we would be a pretty good team. It's too early to tell, but I think the opportunity is there that they push themselves. You know, we have opportunity this year. Last season, the Cardinals started great, but struggled in the middle part of the schedule. The downturn is something they're hoping to avoid this season, and they believe their attitude will be a key part in achieving that goal. Yeah, I think we started off really well last year. I think. Uh, we played some tougher competition later in the year. I think that's why it fell off. But yeah, I think we just need to push through it. I think we have to have a mindset that we're the best team out here because I think we are. I think we're one of the best teams in our section for sure. The section realignment that moved Powerhouse Moundsview out opened the door for the Cardinal. And they want to be the ones to step through it this season. But at the same time, their plan is to take baby steps to reach their ultimate goal. The same, same expectations year after year. If we can win more than we lose, that's not the only gauge of success, but win is a lot more fun than losing. You know, you mentioned last year, we ended up 14 and eight last year. Um, I think this year, if we can get 14 and eight or better, I, that's our benchmark. Regular season success is always nice, but this is another program building toward the section tournament. Coach Storick looks at the road before them as ways to give the guys as much opportunity to prepare for the postseason as possible. You're, obli you're allowed 28 matches. We have 28 matches scheduled this year. 16 contact dates, and then when you do a tournament, that, those matches are included. So I want to make sure they're as seasoned as possible for section play. The start they've had is inspiring and impressive, but it's just the beginning of what these Cardinals are hoping will be an historic year for the program. I'm expecting maybe a couple losses here and there, but for the most part, definitely a winning record. I think it'll be very dominant. Well, so far, so good on the domination aspect. Eight for eight, you yeah, can't get bad. any better than that. Nope. But, uh, you know, you heard uh, uh, Grimmer, I think it was, said, you know, we face some – tougher competition later in the year, and that'll certainly be the case. No question. Uh, Cardinals have Maple Grove coming up on Thursday. Fortunately, they're at their home court, so that might help. Uh, but the Crimson, usually a very tough team. Uh, and then they'll be at Anoka next Tuesday. Track and field teams got their season underway last week. They hosted Centennial for a little duel. Uh, we did not get team uh, places or scores for this. Uh, but early on, things looking good. This is the boys' team. Some of their first place finishes include 4x100 meter relay, uh, Spencer Howe in the 300 meter hurdles, 
Uh, Green in the shot put with Van Dyke right behind him. Actually, they took first, second, and third in the shot. Uh, Soto finished third or first in the discus. Galen Tombwe was first in the long jump at 19 foot 5 inches. And Tanner Gullicks and Jernell, who was one of the team's leaders last year, uh, certainly their pole vault leader last year, uh, picking up pretty well. Uh, it starts his, starts the season with a first place finish, vaulting over 11 feet. And, uh, and I, I want to say their, their field events, there were a couple of different ones, including pole vaults, I think, where they finished at least one, two, and a lot of one, two, three finishes. So uh, that's very exciting. Uh, nice way to start. Nice to see. W nice to see for certain. Want to see a, see a few more first places no out of the out of the the track t the track side of it. But uh, but whatever works and and things going well to start. No question about it. Well, it was a decent start as we talked about for the boys track and field team. But it's just the beginning. These Cardinals are easily hoping to. Are really hoping to have a major turnaround from last season when they finish near the bottom of the conference. They return solid pieces and they have the right mindset to prove, move the program forward. I think this team has come with an eagerness to learn and um, determination to win. The Cardinals are committed to improving their skills this season, but they also want to improve attitudes across the board and reestablish a culture of winning. I think we're like we're working on pushing each other, like getting out of the rut of losing, because like all of our sports haven't really been that successful. So we're just trying to get that the character of winning back. After two seasons away from the team, Russ Sullivan returns as head coach. The team is in a rebuilding phase, but Sullivan is excited because the numbers are growing and the newer members are eager to help return the program to prominence. Well, a lot of them were in the weight room with us in the winter, so we had a good base there. So and now we're trying to pair them up with some of the upperclassmen and so they can take them under their wings and help train them. One nice thing is the team has a lot of great leadership. They only lost eight seniors to graduation, and the veterans coming back understand the importance of their roles, and they're excited to show the younger teammates the way to succeed. Being a captain means to me, it, it means to be someone the other people can look up to and aspire to be like. So someone who's not afraid to make mistakes first to teach everyone else and also someone who is selfless and willing to do what's best for the team. Last week's duel with Centennial will serve as a baseline for the Cardinals this season. While they would love to win a conference and section title, they know the real measure of their success will be what they can achieve from now until the end of the year. The thing I'm looking forward most in the season is seeing how our team goes from our first meet to our last meet together. Um, seeing what points we put up at True Team and just seeing how much we can accomplish in one season. They now have that starting point. Only time will tell how much they're able to improve and how well they're able to finish. But one thing is for certain, the Cardinals have a group that is committed to their goals and will push each other to reach the highest heights this season and for years into the future. Kids, I really like the demeanor that the kids have. We have some good seniors and juniors that are um, locked into what we need to do, um, making sure they're talking to the underclassmen as well and trying to bring them up with them and teaching them. Numbers are up. That's, Which is great. That's, that's a good thing. And it sounds like that's kind of a, a trend across all spring sports. Yep. That's, a, that's a wonderful trend no to question. see. Um, hopefully it leads to more success for uh, all the spring teams. And, you know, we talked about it when we did the, the winter uh, review show just a couple weeks ago. Uh, the strides that all of the winter programs were able to make was, was very uh, inspiring yep. um, and impressive. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, some of the spring teams are able to kind of keep that that momentum going. I think they will. You know, I think I definitely think they will. We had a chance to go out and visit with the boys la lacrosse team, which we'll show next Tuesday night, and, and their numbers are up. So, you know, that's those are those are good things for these programs. Well, the Cardinals will be facing off against the uh, Centennial Cougars again Tuesday at Centennial. The Blaine Bengals will be there as well, and then they are at uh, or no, that that's actually today uh, that was happening, and then they're at Anoka next Tuesday. Girls track team also taking. Uh, taking part in a duel with Centennial last week at home. And uh, no surprise to see Callie Harris winning both first, uh, first place in both 100 and 300 meter hurdles. Brielle Clark, what a day for her. She's first place in the 100 and 200 meter dash and also uh, first place in the high jump. Brina Del Castillo was first place in the, in the uh, one mile run and Shuck finished first in the 800 meter or half mile run. 
The girls team had a little better season than the boys last year, and they have a solid foundation to continue the program forward. Led by All-State Hurdler uh, Kelly Harris, the Cardinals have a number of veterans that will have a chance at conference and section titles. Plus, they have a good group of younger athletes ready to fill the holes left from graduation. It's hard to say. We've only had one meet, so it's kind of early in the season. So we're not really sure what uh, what to expect of our team. The girls track and field team is entering the season with tempered optimism. They believe they have potential, but at the same time, they know there's still a lot of work to do. It's really young, um, really inexperienced, and in overall, we have some very um, strong individuals that are, have been on the, on the team for a few years now, but for the most part, I'd say 70 to 80 percent of our girls are still relatively new uh, first or second year girls with our program, so there's still a lot that they're learning. Um, they're still really young, and they're still you know, trying to figure out what's going to be their best events and how to, to accomplish their goals for those events. The Cardinals have a little bit better numbers this year, and while they do have a lot of young, inexperienced athletes, they also have a great group of veteran leaders ready to show their younger teammates the way to reach the top. Take uh, hard workouts like seriously, like get the times that we're supposed to get, um, and like for races, like um, know your times, know what you're supposed to do or who you're supposed to run with. The field events were a strength for the Cardinals last year, but that's also where they were hit hardest by graduation. In the first meet of the year, this year's team is already showing they're going to be able to fill those holes. And we're throwing pretty well. We still have a lot to do, but for our first meet, a lot of people are breaking their PRs, and I'm just really proud of them. I think we're going in the right direction. The season will undoubtedly have its ups and downs. How the team deals with the downtimes will be key to what they're able to achieve this year. And for the team, I'd say the same thing for a weakness. We just kind of get down on ourselves and then we, we don't want to get in that mindset of, you know, negativity. And then a uh, strength for the team is that we're all just like a big family. We all get along and motivate each other. The Cardinals have veterans that will score team points every meet and should compete for conference and section crowns. The challenge will be putting the newer athletes in the right spots where they will be successful and be able to contribute to the team. We want to look at it as you know, giving us the best opportunity to succeed and to place as high as we can at conference, but it's also about, especially with how young we are, developing them and looking at the overall picture of let's see what we can do this year and then build off of it for next year and the year after. Girls also at Centennial uh, try meet with the Blaine Bengals today. They're at Anoka next Tuesday and uh, should be interesting to watch. And they, they do have those those handful of girls that, that really could uh, could have special years. Callie Harris uh, will try to make it to state for the fourth straight season. That would, that would be great. Let's hope that she does. And uh, as we talked about, uh, the uh, we did not get a chance to get to uh, the golf or lacrosse teams. We will get those previews for you next week. Uh, boys golf team actually starts the season with the Bunker Hills invite on Thursday of this week. They're at the TPC invite on Monday. Girls golf team starts with the Shamrock invite on Thursday of this week. And they are at Champlin for their first conference duel uh, next Tuesday. Boys lacrosse team starts the season. Well, both lacrosse teams start the season next Monday. Uh, boys will be at home against Spring Lake Park. And Howie? We'll be there. They're at Osseo Park Center on Wednesday of next week. Girls is uh, the exact opposite. They're at Spring Lake Park on Monday and host Osseo Park Center on Wednesday. And we hope to get previews of all four uh, of the remaining programs for you next week, along as well as uh, all of the details of events that are happening between now and then. Here's what we plan to be at. We're going to be at the softball game at Champlain Park on Thursday. Then the boys lacrosse season opener against Spring Lake Park at home on Monday night. And then now uh, we get to see the baseball team again on Thursday the 20th when they host the Blaine Bengals. But that's going to do it. For this edition of Sports Day, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young, saying goodnight.